Well, I told her last Sunday, I said, I'm going to speak next week. She said, are you going to speak? I said, I'm going to speak. Amen. And so I'm going to share what's on my heart with you. Well, we're, we're in the kingdom series. Are you in the kingdom? Yes. Shout, I'm in the kingdom. Yes. Now, this series has gotten uh, broken up considerably, but we'll bring it back together. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to uh, begin, let's begin with some of our uh, key scriptures that we uh, looked at in this series. And the first one I want to look at is Matthew 4, Matthew 4, verse 17. And it says, from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, we said that means the kingdom of heaven isn't necessarily here yet, but it's near. It's close by, all right? And then in Matthew 10, verse 7 and 8, when Jesus told the disciples uh, to go out and to preach, he said, as you go preach, say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then he told them something else. He said, heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. And we said this, it's interesting. Even with the kingdom not necessarily being here, but the kingdom just getting close by. The Bible said there was the sick being healed. The lepers were cleansed. The dead got raised and devils got cast out. Can you give the Lord praise for that? Amen. Amen. Then we looked at Luke 17, verse 20 and 21, and this is very important to us in this series. It says, when he demanded of the Pharisees, when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come. He answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Everybody say, if you're saved now, if you're not, you can't say this yet. But you can say it. You can get ready to say it. Amen. Say, if you're saved, say, The kingdom of God, kingdom of God. is within me. Now, there's no way I can review all of this, but i gotta, I got to tell you a few things real quickly. We have, first of all, said the kingdom of God is not just a physical realm of heaven. Most people in the church, if you mention the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, we think of, well, they think, well, that's heaven. One of these days, I'm going to this kingdom, and it's heaven and there's the streets of gold, gates of pearl. Jesus is going to be there and all of that. And how many are glad that is true and we're going to be there? Hallelujah. But it's more than that. We found out that when we got born again, everybody say born again. Born. Do you believe in being born again? Amen. We're not talking about a religious experience. When we get saved, we are born again. Old things are passed away. All things become new. I become a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. I am a born again new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And we found some things out. Amen. According to, I'll just give you a couple of scriptures here. Let's, let's see. The Bible says in Ephesians 2.19, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens of the saints and members of God's household. Everybody shout, I'm a citizen. When I got born again, I became a citizen. Everybody say, a heavenly citizen. Where is your citizenship? Everybody shout, heaven. I'm in the world. This world's not my home. I'm in it, but I'm not of it. Amen. Glory to God. I'm now a citizen of a heavenly kingdom with another king. Glory to God, who is the king of kings and lord of lords. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. I may be in this nation 
uh, Trump might be my president right now, but glory to God, there is a kingdom that supersedes that, and I'm a citizen of that kingdom. Glory to God, Jesus is the king, and I am his representative in the earth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, with all that being said, <laughs> amen, we found out we are ambassadors. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5.20, we are ambassadors for Christ. Everybody that's saved, shout, I am an ambassador. We found out that we are a dwelling place for the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God lives in me and works in and through me. Everybody say, I'm a dwelling place. Well, we're citizens. We're ambassadors. We're dwelling places. And the last message I got to preach to you, we found out we are no longer just poor old sinners saved by grace. And if you weren't here, I don't have time to re-preach it, although I'd love to. You're going to have to go get it. But we're out of the mentality. I'm just a poor old sinner saved by grace. And some are still singing the poor old fleshy song, I'm just a wayfaring stranger. Dear Lord, never sing that mess. Because I'm not just a wayfaring stranger. I'm not just a pilgrim. I'm a citizen. I'm an ambassador. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm his representative in the earth. Hallelujah. I'm anointed. The Holy Ghost lives in me. The angels are around me. I have his name. I have his blood. I am not just a poor old sinner saved by grace. I was, but I'm not now. How many was or you were a sinner? But you were translated into a different kingdom, the kingdom of his dear son. Now, with all that being said, today, briefly, we'll talk about something called kingdom assignments. First of all, going back with what we just said, we are not nobodies in the earth. Hello, amen. We are not nobodies. Less than, lesser than in the earth. I don't think it's getting across. Look up here and say, we are not nobodies. Now this is going to stretch some, but you need to say it anyway. We are somebodies. somebodies. Dear God, I'd never say that. That's prideful. We are somebodies. somebodies. Well, we already figured out we're citizens of the heavenly kingdom. That's somebody. We found out we are ambassadors. Now, I didn't give you the translation of that because we already gave the definition of that in other sermons. It's a representative of of the kingdom. That's not a nobody. That's a somebody. If an ambassador of the United States of America walks in here today, he or she is somebody with a voice that is to be heard. And I'm an ambassador, so I can't be a nobody. Turn around and tell somebody, if you are saved, you are not a nobody. You are a somebody. Now, I need to wake some up. There are no silent ambassadors. You're awful silent. I said there are no silent ambassadors. Everywhere I go, the kingdom goes. Whatever room I walk into, the kingdom just arrived. When I go to work on Monday morning, 
See, they don't realize it, but the kingdom just showed up. An ambassador. When you go to school, they don't know it, but the, if you're saved, the kingdom just showed up. Wherever you're going on Monday morning, whatever you're doing throughout the week, if you are saved, an ambassador, a citizen, a dwelling place of the Holy Ghost, the kingdom just showed up. This is why in Mark, one of the last things Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. How many believers in the house? Some of those signs were, you're going to lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. You're going to cast out devils. Dear Lord, me? Who? Here's what the church says. Who, me? That's the way the church walks around. Me? Lay hands on the sick. Me? Cast out a devil. Me? Speak the word of God. You don't know who you are. But it's time you find out. You are an ambassador. You are somebody in the earth. Come on and give God praise. Now, got to get where I'm going. We'll be done. God always uses people. Now, we're going to be digging into something. She's digging into it already, and I've wanted to be here to help her on Wednesday night. I'm going to be here. And I'm going to help her with some things. I told her when she started this series, I said, now listen, I want in on that. I got to get in on that. Isn't God good? The people are still trying to get God to come down here and do a whole lot of things that God said, I have left you to do. Hello, amen. amen. You lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Oh God, please come down here and heal me. No, you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Do you understand what I'm saying? God always finds a man or a woman makes no difference to him. And in Scripture, he found people to sin. He sent Moses. He sent Esther. Such a time as this. He set Joseph up over a period of years so that Joseph would end up, imagine this, in second in command of all of Egypt. Can you imagine that? And then, David, the most unlikely candidate for king, even his own father overlooked him, but when it came to the anointing, it would only flow on David. And guess who ended up in the palace? David. Some of you, the most unlikely, you're the only one the anointing oil is going to flow for for some of the assignments in this earth. And God's going to use you in places to reach people and do things that nobody else can do because the anointing will only flow upon you for that assignment. But glory to God, when you get in it, the anointing is going to be there to carry you all the way through and you're going to do mighty exploits and things you never dreamed you would do when you figure out and understand who you are in this kingdom. Shout, I'm somebody. I'm I'm not a nobody. Now, I am on assignment. Yeah, you are. You're the pastor. Pastors are on assignment. Missionaries are on assignment. 
The evangelists are on assignment. Y'all get anything out of this? I got a news flash for you. You are on an assignment. Now you about half afraid to amen that. You are on an assignment. Are you saved? Amen. You sound about half saved. I said, are you saved? Amen. Born again. Amen. Citizens. Amen. Dwelling places for the spirit. Ambassadors. Yeah. I'm about halfway there. <laughs> then you are on an assignment. Amen. Look at your neighbor. They're saved and say, you're on assignment. <laughs> Look at them again and say, you have an assignment. Yes. Now here, here, the body of Christ thinks we gave the fivefold the assignment. Give us a preacher. Got the sick. It's the preacher's job. Get the preacher to the sick. There's churches that have killed the preacher <laughs> doing what they were assigned to do. Amen. Not going to kill me because I'm going to teach you how to do it because it's your job. Lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. Pastor, come to my house. I got a devil in my bedroom. You think things like this don't happen. We were pastoring in Louisville. Some lady called the office. I got demons in my house. The lady answered the phone, said, hold on. Pastor Patty is sitting there. She said, it's for you. Well, you got a demon in your house, cast it out. Amen. Don't have to call the preacher. You're on assignment. Amen. Everybody shout, I have an assignment. Have an assignment. Now let, let's get it in our spirit. Say, I have an assignment. Have an Say, assignment. I'm on assignment. I'm on assignment. Now, are you? Amen. Are you really? Yeah. Say, I have an assignment. Have an assignment. I'm, on assignment. I'm on assignment. What that means is, wherever I go, I am representing the kingdom. I don't represent this world. This world is not my home. I don't represent the things of this world. It don't matter where I go. If I go to the grocery store, I represent the kingdom and my king. If I'm at school, I represent the kingdom and my king. If I'm going down to Walmart, God help us, I am representing the kingdom and my king. On my job, I represent the kingdom and my king. I got to get this in my spirit and realize when I get up in the morning, I'm his ambassador. So wherever I'm going that day, whatever I'm doing that day, I represent the king of kings and I represent the kingdom of God. I am his ambassador and I am on assignment. Shout, I'm on assignment. Means wherever I go, I'm looking for opportunity to be an ambassador. John Osteen said years ago that he had just got over into Pentecost, and that's exciting. Because Pentecost people did things that we Baptists didn't do. We kind of had just our routine. Is that right? Go to church, sing three songs, hear the preacher preach. I'm going to be careful here, but I'm going to say it anyway because I am, I was one, so I, and halfway hear what he said, get us out by noon so we can get to lunch and go home. The Pentecostals had some exciting things. They went to the altar a lot. They laid hands on people. We didn't do that in my church. They anointed people with oil. 
We can do that in my church. They believed in the supernatural. We believed it was that God could do it in our church. It didn't happen in our church. <laughs> but John said it was so exciting when he came over into Pentecost, you know, he carried his little ball of oil in his pocket everywhere he went. And he just couldn't wait to find somebody to pray for. <laughs> he said he'd go somewhere and he'd, he, and somebody would start to say, Brother Osteen, he said, are you sick? Because <laughs> he wanted to get that all out. What was, he was on assignment, ready for action. God wants Grace Fellowship Church to get to attention and be ready for action and realize every day of the year, 365 days a year, I am on assignment wherever I go. Tommy Swanner, when you're putting a phone system in, you are on assignment. Hallelujah. Ladies that work the food pantry, when you're there, you're on more than an assignment of providing food. You are on a heavenly assignment. God may lead you to lay hands on the sick. God might even have you cast a few devils out down there, but whatever needs to be done, you are well equipped to do it because you are his ambassador on assignment for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You realize I'm carrying this everywhere I go. Everywhere. See, some people want to lay down their ambassadorship on Monday morning. And then on Saturday night, I will pick it back up again, carry it to church. Church was not your assignment. Your assignment is what happens outside of these four walls with you being an anointed vessel of the Holy Ghost doing what God tells you to do, going where he tells you to go, and being his voice in the earth. Now, I've got about four hours of preaching wrapped up here in me. We'll be finished in a minute. So, what do you do? doesn't matter what you do. If you'll start seeing yourself in a different light. Amen. Say this right now, son. I'm going to see myself different. Where are you going in the morning? Where are you going this week? I'm not just going, I'm not going just in the natural. Here I come. I'm here. There might not be another saved person in this room, but I'm here. And like the woman with the alabaster box, when she broke it open, it impacted the environment of the entire room. One born again, spirit filled child of God can impact the environment of an entire corporation Amen. if they know who they are. Amen. Now, I'm trying to get somewhere, and here we are, and we'll close. There's a problem in the body, and God said, Address it. And it's time for you to get rid of it. Everybody look up here and say, I got ears to hear, ears to hear. what the Spirit is going to say. There has long been an inferiority problem in the church. I got about three amens and a grunt. There has long been an inferiority issue in the church. 
And it goes back to traditional, non-biblical teaching that we are just the poor old church, struggling, and we're going to struggle. But one day, it'll all be over in the sweet by and by. Therefore, we take our back seat. We let the devil run over us. We let the world do what they want to do. When the truth is, we're supposed to be getting our voice out there and ruling and reigning as kings and priests yeah. in this earth realm. Yeah, amen. Now, quickly, oh, quickly, but obediently. In Genesis 12, you didn't have that on those notes. When God called Abram, he said, I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee. Make thy name great. Everybody say, I'll make thy name great. And you shall be a blessing. I'll bless them that bless thee. Curse them that curse thee. And in thee all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God said, Abram, I'm going to cause you to have favor. Well, that went over real good. <laughs> Abram, I'm going to put favor on you. I'm not just going to do that. I'm going to make your name great. Now, if you go back to the last chapter, we're not going back there. The people of Babel were trying to make a name for themselves. A lot of people try and do that. But God said, Abram, I'm going to take care of your name. I'm going to give you a name that's got some influence. And in all that he said, there is nothing that denotes that Abraham is supposed to be inferior. Are you with me? Now, inferiority, here's, here's the definition. It is the state of being lower in status. or in quality than another or than others. Lower in position. I'll pause there. i got another one I'm going to give you. But how many of you, don't raise your hands, have struggled with personal inferiority? I think there would be many. And mine would be the first, what? Yes, ma'am, yes, sir. I was so inferior, I could not do a book report in high school. And I dreaded going into the classroom because the teacher was going to look at me and say good morning, and I had to say good morning back. <laughs> if that's not inferiority, I don't know what it is. The state of being lower. Lower in quality than others. And then this. It means bottom or base. Everybody say bottom or base. Bottom or base. That kind of goes against you shall be above and not beneath. That's right. The head and not the tail. Can you see that inferiority can be found within the curse. And the body of Christ has accepted this thing of inferiority, which means we want to take the back seat. Now, this is not strange. I'm giving you this and we're done. It is not a strange thing because some of the greatest Men, and I'm sure women too, but in Scripture we have examples of men of God who dealt with this spirit of inferiority and intimidation. And here's the thing. God would never honor it and never accept it. For example, Moses, 
was intimidated and said, I can't go before Pharaoh and gave God excuses. Right now, you need to understand there are no excuses with God. He'll take care of every one of them. Amen. He'll always take care of your excuses. And then Gideon. The angel of the Lord shows up and says, Hey, mighty man of valor. And here's the church. Who, me? <laughs> Who are you talking to? You can't be talking to me. <laughs> yeah, you. You are, a, I'm the least. My tribe's the least. I'm the least. I can't do nothing. I can't do anything. I couldn't be a voice. I couldn't be. See, that's the mentality the devil wants to keep you in. I can't. I'm not able. God will use somebody else. No, honey, you are on assignment. God is going to anoint you, and God is going to use you. He can use you just like he can use anybody else. And then one more. In the New Testament, Timothy. And Paul had to come tell Timothy, Timothy, you stir that gift up. It's in you. It's in you. I said it's in you. Look at somebody. I feel led of the Holy Ghost. Look at them right now and say, it's in you. Oh, look at them again. You didn't preach it loud enough. It's in you. It's in you. Some of you need to be reminded there's some things you thought were lost that's no it's still in you. Amen. Some dreams still in you, some visions still in you, some anointings yet to be released. Hallelujah. Your best days, your your best days are not behind you. Your best days are ahead of you. Some new assignments, some new anointings, some fresh vision, some great new dreams. Hallelujah. God has a great new assignment for you as you step out and declare, I will be his ambassador in this kingdom. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. All right. And he said, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Amen. Everybody say, God has not given me a spirit of fear. God has not given me a spirit now listen, fear, that word, actually is timidity. Oh, who am I to say anything? Well, honey, you're a child of the Most High God. You're a citizen of the heavenly kingdom. If you're saved, the Holy Ghost is dwelling in you. And if you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, you even got a double portion. And if you don't have him, you need him. You're an ambassador. Dear Lord, what more need I tell you? Who am I to say anything? Well, get out of that. Some of you are going to surprise some people. They've been used to some quiet, little mousy church Christian. And the voice of the lion is getting ready to roar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said the voice you're getting ready to get your voice and it's going to scare the living daylights out of the devil because he didn't think you had it in you and it's going to scare the living daylights out of some relatives and they're going to try to figure out what got in you don't worry about it. They may never figure it out. But we know. Amen. Did you receive anything today? Stand up. Or I preach three more hours.